Hey everybody, welcome back to the Laps Comic Fan, and today we're talking 1989's Pride of the X-Men. So I'd like to thank all the new subscribers. I really appreciate the support. And if you're not subscribed and you like the content, try clicking that button right there. And for everybody else, put your thumbs in the upright position. So Pride of the X-Men was a pilot that Marvel released and it was they were trying to get it picked up to be a full-time show, uh, a series. And uh, apparently it didn't do so well a whole bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of weird information behind this, like how they paid to get this done was uh, from extra earnings they made from a RoboCop thing. It's You can read about it if you go on their Wikipedia. But this video holds a little special place in my heart because my brother had got this for me, um, I think in like 1990 or 91, and it was a little VHS, and I watched it all the time because it was one thing to have the characters uh, I had action figures like Wolverine. He, I had this one where on the bottom of his arms, it was like this little thing you pulled back and then you would click it over here so his claws would be in and then you could, and his claws would come out. And we had all the trading cards for series one and almost everything of the actual X-Men cards with the holograms and everything like that. My brother collected those. And X-Men was a really big part of my childhood. It's one of the few Marvel things that I tried very hard to read. I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to because DC was just when I was DC was just huge to me. It was the I liked the character so much more. But what's really cool is when in 92 they came out with an X-Men show, I thought before I saw a commercial and I had heard about it, I thought it was going to be like this. And I love this animation style, as you're going to get to see. Now, don't get me wrong. The show we got in 92 was cool, and it had a lot of really cool things in it. But the animation was subpar, in my opinion. The voice acting was just, eh. But we'll get into this voice acting, because it's a lot worse. But the animation in this, if we would have gotten a show that looked like this, it would have been amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right into Pride of the X-Men. The title is a pun on the name of Kitty Pride, the youngest of the X-Men. The series that this episode was intended to launch never materialized. Marvel Productions would have to go back to the drawing board for the 1992's X-Men. Funding for this pilot actually came from the budget for RoboCop the Animated Series. Instead of making a 13th episode of RoboCop, Marvel Productions decided to use their funding to have Toei Animation produce the animation for this pilot. The pilot itself is most specifically influenced by issues 129 through 139 of the Uncanny X-Men. No place to hide. No place to run. No place to run. The mutant age, the mutant age has now begun. X-Men, X-Men, this is the day, this is the day. X-Men, X-Men, come and go. The video starts off with a narration by Stan Lee about mutants, good and bad. Look around you, your classmates, your friends. You never know which one of them may be a mutant, a person born with strange and wondrous powers. Now, some mutants, like the X-Men, use their special gifts for good. But then there are the terrorist mutants who plan to destroy the human race. We see right away a lot of the humans don't care for the mutants. In fact, there's a lot of bigotry towards them. Mutants. I hate them. Take this mutie we're hauling tonight, for example. He's too dangerous to live. I am Magneto. Release me. I command him. The military is transporting Magneto somewhere, and he looks awesome. Much more menacing than his 1992 counterpart. I've never seen anything like it. His power. Magneto is exhibiting crazy power that no one has ever seen, passing 500 on the power reader scale. He's a mutant. 
same planet as normal, decent human beings. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I'm guessing he doesn't want anybody on his lawn either. Magneto tells Colonel Stereotype that mutants are here to stay and humans have no place on this earth. Colonel Stereotype's heard enough out of him, so what does he do? The convoy skids out, halting Colonel Stereotype's awesome attack plan on Magneto, when one of the men tells him that the convoy seems to be sinking. And how can that be? Well, this is when we are introduced to the White Queen. Bliss against the mental powers of the White Queen. Sir, it's the highway itself. I know it sounds crazy, but it's turning into quicksand. Quicksand, quicksand, why what kind of a fool are you? You crazy rockin' broken varmint! Come out of there, you bladder spitting as a trap roll! After taking care of the military scrubs, the White Queen gets in position to free Magneto. <laughs> With this, Magneto is free, and the world will never be same for the humans. With that murderous mutant on the loose, son, none of us are gonna be all right. A taxi pulls up to a mansion, and we are introduced to Kitty Pride, another mutant. He's a mutant, a stinking mutant. The taxi cab speeds off, and she goes into the mansion, and that's where she's greeted by the person who runs this place. An awesome guy called Professor Xavier. startled. My mind is projecting an image of myself for you to follow. I am Professor Charles Xavier, also known as Professor X. I and those who have joined me are known as the X-Men. X-Men? But, but I thought the X-Men were... Mutants? Yes. Kitty is startled by how much the professor knows about her and what she can do. Her parents don't even know about her abilities. He introduces her to Cerebro, a computer that helps Xavier find other mutants. After seeing this, Kitty realizes she's a mutant and takes it very well. I'm a freak. He's a mutant, a stinking mutant. Xavier consoles Kitty and wants to show her the X-Men in action. He takes her to the danger room. It's where the team learns to use and control their powers in simulated combat. This is Scott Summers, better known as Cyclops. His eyes shoot concentrated beams of pure energy. Next is Peter Rasputin. His code name is Colossus. Don't worry, Kitty, as Colossus Peter is impervious to harm. <laughs> He's good. Next, meet Allison Blair, the Dazzler. She can transform sound into powerful bolts of light. Oh, who's that? Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler has mastered the art of line of sight teleportation. That's Wolverine with razor like adamantium claws. They're sharp enough to slice through almost any substance known to man. Now we meet Storm, whose mutant ability to control weather itself is still not completely understood. Finally, as for me, I have the ability to see into people's minds. Their minds? Oh, don't worry, child. I don't use my gift recklessly. I think you'll find my X-Men a very pleasant group once you get to know them, Miss Pride. The professor calls the X-Men up to meet Kitty. Nightcrawler shows up first, and Kitty, well... Ah, a mutant, a stinking mutant. Ah, Fräulein, what a lovely vision you are. Please allow me. Kitty freaks out and it triggers her powers. She can phase through solid matter. She falls into the danger room and Storm catches her. With the team looking on at her, Colossus welcomes her, and Wolverine says, Kids. What? So Wolverine's voice is not Canadian, it's Australian. They did this apparently because of the Australian boom in America in the 80s with Mad Max and Crocodile Dundee and all that garbage. Welcome her, wait, she's not joining the X-Men, is she? She's just a kid. Kids. 
Storm tells Wolverine to back off. Kitty's probably scared. You know, don't you remember what it was like when you first found out you were a mutant? Here's some storm clouds to mess with you. Apparently, Wolverine hates lightning and is afraid of thunder. And that's when an alarm hits. What's that? It's an alarm, you dumbass. Definitely not X-Men material. The X-Men take off to take care of the situation that tripped the alarm, but what they don't know is Magneto is right outside the mansion and he's got backup, the Juggernaut. The mansion is left unguarded. Juggernaut, all right, and let nothing stand in your way. Who are those people? Magneto, master of magnetism, and I'm sorry to say my stepbrother, Juggernaut. Xavier explains to Kitty who Magneto and Juggernaut are and how it's the X-Men's duty to protect the human race from villainous mutants like them. If Magneto should ever win, he would make slaves out of the humans. This scares Kitty, and she phases through Cerebro's computer, screwing up its defense systems. They make it inside the mansion, so Xavier reads Magneto's thoughts. Magneto wants Cerebro's mutant power circuit, so Xavier gives it to Kitty to run away and protect it. The bad guys bust into the mansion, and Magneto sees the power circuit. Ah, the mutant power circuit. Give it to me, girl! Kitty, face out! Kitty takes off with the power circuit, and Magneto goes after her while Juggernaut's giant hand engulfs the professor. Kitty is cornered by Magneto, so what does she do? Phase through the walls? Make a last stand protecting the power circuit? Nah, she fails and throws the circuit right at Magneto, dooming all of humanity. Great first mission. <laughs> Is mine. Remember that mission the X-Men were on? Yeah, neither do I. Meanwhile, unaware of Magneto's attack on the headquarters, the X-Men race to the Deep Space Observatory for a showdown with Magneto's deadly allies, the Blob and Pyro. The Blob and Pyro have a family held hostage under a yellow energy net. Blob stands guard while Pyro does the very important part of their mission, pulling a metal wiener out of a console. His world will what, Pyro? Ah, we've been expecting you. Expecting us? Colossus, take care of this. No power on Earth can move the blob. Back off, X-Men. Please help us. Let the hostages go, Pyro. This doesn't concern them. Wrong, Ruby Eyes. In two days, it'll concern every human on Earth. Wait till I get my claws on him. He'll be talking out the other side. Look out! The family is released from the energy net, and they thank them the only way they know how. Hey, stay away, you filthy mutants! He's a mutant, a stinking mutant! Y'all them Pyro got what they came for. Whatever it was... It poses a threat to the whole human race. Those mutants are in there! Cover on the exits! That's our cue. Let's go! Hang on, everyone! We cut to Magneto's hideout in space. He asks his minions if the computer has locked onto the comet. And when they say yes, he has Toad place the power circuit into the magnetron. Magneto declares Scorpio is now in range. Whatever that means. Back at the mansion, they find Xavier under a pile of rubble, and Storm uses a tornado to whisk away the debris. Where did it go? Cyclops clears off a space for Xavier to lay down. But where is Kitty? Kitty! No! No! Get away from me! He's a mutant! A stinking mutant! Kitty! It's okay! You're safe now! Then it's all been... real. Of course it's all been real! Get with it! The X-Men don't have room for whiny brats! Uh, kids! After realizing it was all real, Kitty is worried about the professor. When she finds out he's okay, she reacts completely normal for a person she's only known for 11 minutes. I failed you. I failed you all. Magneto has the circuit. You didn't fail, my child. None of us would have had a chance alone against Magneto. We must discover exactly what Magneto is up to before it's too late. Oh, the power circuit works. I can feel the energy, the power. I have located Magneto. The power, the power. After the power knocks out Professor Xavier, we find out Magneto's plan. Will be wiped out. The mutants will rule the earth. This is it, true. 
true believers. Unless the X-Men can stop Magneto, mankind is doomed. Xavier's going to tell everyone about the power Magneto intends to unleash. Magneto, he's changed the course of the comet Scorpio directly towards Earth. The, the power, the power, the power! Xavier tells the crew about Magneto's plan. If he goes through with it, half of the population will be gone, and the debris from the explosion would block out the sun for years. They have to stop him. That's when Hugh Jackman brings up a great point. Hold it! The kid stays here! She'll just get in the way! I will not! And stop calling me a kid! I am 14 years old! I'm sorry, Kitty, but Wolverine's right. You haven't been trained. It's much too dangerous. You'll stay here. Until later, my child. Oh, yeah? I'll show you. I'll show you all. Reports of a comet getting very close to Earth and the potential disaster it could cause makes the rounds on the news. The X-Men are close enough to use their spacesuits to board Magneto's base. Storm and Xavier stay on the ship, but they're not alone. You can come out now. You were told to remain at the mansion. I couldn't. It's my fault Magneto has the power circuit. I've got to help stop him. What you plan to do is very dangerous. I have to help. The world Magneto wants to destroy is my world too. Oh, Professor, wish me luck. Good luck, my dear. Good luck to us all. The team floats up to the side of the base, but how will they get in? Surely they can't use their powers with spacesuits on. Magneto is alerted to the X-Men's arrival. He sends out the Brotherhood to stop them. First up, Pyro. <laughs> G'day! Welcome to Asteroid M! Don't you just love a good Barbie? Leave this one to the Dazzler! Uh... <laughs> you guys go on! <sighs> oh yes! An animated fight with Wolverine. I've been waiting for this for years. This is gonna be epic. to get past our little welcoming committee, but you go no further. And who is going to stop us? Me, Juggernaut! Gentlemen, welcome. Nightcrawler makes it to Magneto, who welcomes him, telling him the Earth will be destroyed in three minutes. Nightcrawler isn't having it. He tries to stop Magneto. The circuit! You made me break the circuit! Now nothing can change the comet's course. Xavier telepathically tells Kitty to strike Magneto, and he tells Nightcrawler to use his body to recharge the circuit somehow. Now they can use Magneto's power to change the comet's course. You blundering juvenile. Do you have any idea what you've done? Yes. I've just stopped a madman from destroying the Earth. And now Scorpio will destroy this base instead. But you still lose. Nightcrawler's own body must continue to complete that circuit, or the comet will change course back to Earth. Although you've won, Nightcrawler must die! Magneto makes his escape, and Kitty has a dilemma, because we all know it's all about her and her feelings. The professor tells Kitty to join the others and leave. He has a plan. Xavier says to Nightcrawler that he will keep the Blackbird on the viewing screen, but he must teleport the moment the comet hits the base. His timing must be perfect. Now, Nightcrawler, now! You've waited too long! He's gone! There! He's alive! 
safe. Not for long. He's entering the Earth's atmosphere. He'll burn up. Not if we can get the grappling beams to him. <laughs> Better hurry! It's getting plenty warm in this suit! Fire the grappling beams! Where is he? Professor? He's... he's gone. No, no. He can't be dead. He just can't be. No! I was so mean to him. Please allow me. Professor? Uh-huh. No, no! Get away from me! The mutant, a stinking mutant! Oh, I can never make it up to him. With Kitty only caring about her own emotions, they hear something at the back of the ship. What's that? Back there! <coughs> Nightcrawler, my little Tavarish. You're not dead after all, no? <laughs> I would hope not. But I would have been. If not for Kitty Pride. Thank you. That was the bravest, most unselfish thing I've ever seen in my life. Don't you agree? <laughs> well, Wolverine, you were against Kitty being a member of the team. What do you think now? Uh, so the kid got lucky that don't make her an X-Man. Not yet. The X-Men have won, but only for now. Magneto is still out there, waiting, planning, plotting the destruction of the human race. But whatever the challenge, whatever the peril, the X-Men will be there. So that was Pride of the X-Men. What did you guys think? Have you ever seen this? What does it mean to you? How does it hold up? Do you like this better than the 92 show? Would you have rather had this style of animation and this team? I don't know. Who knows where the show would have gone to, but I really, really, really would have liked to seen something more than just one episode from this. Next time on the Laps Comic Fan, we're going to continue Project X. Video will be up probably tomorrow. I hope you guys like it. Peace out, everybody.